going to talk about uh, productionization, and yes, yes, it's a word. Um, some asked me about it. Um, what do you say about live coding? Should I? Yes. Bad, right? OK, so let's do something else. Live deploy? Well, in a way, it's not really live deploy, but we'll give it a try, OK? So uh, let's start a project and call it PyCon IL19 demo. It's going to start a virtual environment, environment a uh, directory with uh, mostly whatever you need uh, for, a, um, for a Python project. It should work, but the internet is not that good. But it's done. OK, no such file. Well. OK, let's try to do something like this. Nope, not what I wanted. OK, better? Yeah, a little more. OK, sorry for the mess. OK, so what do we have here? We have uh, all kinds of files that most of them we won't use, but the most important of all is setup.py, and uh, we have requirements which, which is actually empty now, and we have actually a package, a uh, package PyCon IL19 demo inside the root directory. Uh, let's look inside. It's just empty. Uh, if we're going to look inside the setup.py, it already has a lot of information that I didn't provide directly, but uh, make MK project just picked it up, uh, like my name and email and uh, all kinds of stuff. Now uh, let's deploy. Let's build a uh, a distribution, a source distribution, a wheel. And let's upload it. OK. And we have a, a deployment. I can now uh, install it from somewhere else. I'll uh, just open some directory. OK. Let's uh, make a new virtual environment. Let's call it uh, Anydar. OK. Yeah, it's taking some time, but OK. And here we have now, what did we call it? PyCon IL 19. OK. Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, requirements test it doesn't exist, but so let's do it the other way. Well, what do you say about live deploy? Also no, right? Bad idea. I tried. Anyway, well, I learned my lesson. So about me, I'm Yehuda Deutsch. I work at Zen City. We help uh, municipalities to uh, make decisions ba uh, based on data. Uh, I'm a backend developer and DevOps engineer, and I volunteer at Hasadna and Hamakor, uh, which uh, some of the organizers here are also members. Uh, by the way, thanks, uh, Benny Dunn, for introducing me to DevPy. Uh, and it's a private uh, Py -Py, uh, Python package index, uh, which is really easy uh, to set up, and it's easy to use, with some limitations. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try to uh, go into the topics I uh, lined out. 
It's about uh, how to structure your Python project. Uh, if it's a uh, local project you're just uh, trying out, or if it's a uh, project you're distributing to uh, the whole world. Um, I'm going to try to talk about environment awareness or agn agnosticism and uh, which formats to use when you're packaging. Uh, versioning, it's a debate, I know, but some say it's uh, the decision is taken, but it, I still think the debate is on. Anyway, uh, CR practices, uh, there's not a lot to talk about specifically about Python, so I won't go uh, deep into it. And public and private distributions is um, sometimes in a company you would want to have uh, private distributions, and I'm going to try to touch about it, and dependency managers. Well, that's uh, something I learned is, is a bit uh, diverse, and uh, many projects use different uh, dependency managers. Uh, not in PM, I hope. Anyway, uh, some nitpicking I'm going to try to go into. So, your project. Uh, PyCon IL 2019 is the root directory. Uh, I'm not sure um, how uh, low I have to go in this talk, but I'm going to try to uh, make it more, uh, explain, uh, explain more uh, details. And then you have the package, PyCon IL 2019. Inside you have the init py. Uh, set up I, readme, md, license, it's just the basic uh, new package. But uh, pay attention that you can actually only work with a set up I. You can deploy a full package using uh, command lines and uh, maybe even code uh, just using set up I uh, or PyProject uh, file. So inside set up I, uh, you're going to use uh, you're going to call the setup of setup tools, or you're going to do something else uh, with this util, this utils. Uh, but let's have a look: name, description, version. The point is, you got to tell uh, the packaging and the uh, Python uh, index and the people who use your project what it is uh, for what it's it's used. Uh, who's intended to use it. You have the classifiers, uh, which I didn't mention because I didn't want to go into it. And um, you, you need to give them uh, the most information you can so they can make a decision if to use your, uh, your, packet, your uh, project or not. Now, alternatively, uh, alternatively you have the uh, PEP uh, 518 and 517. And you can use the Pi project Toml. Why to use Toml? It's uh, uh, described in, in the PEP, and I think it's a it's a good choice. Uh, not that anybody asked me, but uh, the main thing is, in my opinion, is that it's uh, quite easy to. Um, it's better than set up Pi because you can use external tools that are not, uh, by the, maybe they won't be Python um, utilities, and you can uh, uh, automate it to write and manipulate uh, Toml uh, files. So you have most of the same uh, attributes, uh, actually all of them, uh, name, version, description, authors, and there's more. Uh, when you start building your project, you have to decide uh, who's your audience, and actually, you have to decide on the identity. You can't leave it uh, just like, okay, I'm going to install Django. Wait, no, I'm going to use Flask. Okay, I'm going to allow people use some of the Django, but it's a full-blown project. If you want to do things uh, with more than one uh, uh, use case, separate them. So uh, if you want to write a library, it's going to be a snippet or a full, uh, I don't know, requests uh, library. It will be used by importing and uh, calling some uh, functions or classes. And most of the people that will use your project will be people that are knowledgeable in Python. So take it in account. They will criticize you. And uh, 
If it's a utility like a command line, a uh, desktop, or a, a daemon, um, it will probably run from the shell, or um, I don't know, clicking on an icon if you uh, defined it well. And some users might not know that it's even Python. It, it, they won't care, it doesn't matter, really. But some people might, so take it into account. And then we have a network app. Most end users of your network app won't know it's Python, won't care if it's Python, and um, write it in a good way that it should work because the, the most important interface of it will be the uh, output and input uh, handling. So some side notes. Tests, don't put them inside uh, the structure of the code, only in the root directory. And uh, remember not to include it inside the, uh, the manifest, so it doesn't get included in the source uh, distribution. And also, don't run it automatically every time somebody installs it, because, come on, it's not Perl. And uh, that files also in the root, and what's up with CircleCI, I don't know, but they have a directory. And data files. Sometimes you'll have a package that uh, uses, I don't know, some CSV or some JPEG, serves from some JPEGs like Django. So if, you, you're, if you're packaging it up, you can uh, use manifest to tell uh, the uh, setup tools to include those files inside uh, the package you are distributing. Secrets, everyone knows, nowhere. Use it from the outside. Now, about environment, uh, when you build a project, you should always um, decide if you're going to be aware to the environment or you're going to be um, ignoring the environment, and to what degree. Because sometimes if you want to uh, create a file and you're going to create a text file and then it's going to run on Windows and it's going to be a bytes file and you didn't think about it. Why? Well, the operating system gives a different interface. Uh, if it's, uh, which user is going to run the, the code? Uh, does he have privileges? Uh, what binaries do you need if you're going to do a subprocess or something like that? Um, environment variables, of course. Uh, installation directory and runtime directory. The difference is uh, really important sometimes if you run a, a command line, if you uh, build a command line, um, the installation directory is uh, obviously where the Python file you're specifically uh, writing now will be installed. But then you have the runtime directory, which you get from get env, uh, from the environment. And that is something you should pay attention to, to the difference. Sometimes I saw code that don't. And overall, you have to pay attention uh, to the environment because it's going to crash if not. It's that simple. Now, about packaging formats. I say you should use a wheel, but Remember to use also a, an SDist always, because sometimes you'll want to give people the option to install it themselves. And, uh, well, if you want to install NumPy on uh, Python 3.8, well, it's going to take some time. And you're going to download the source dis distribution, and it's going to compile everything. And it's still a good idea to allow people to do that. It's, um, it's, nothing, it's nothing that people don't do, um, but remember to use both SDIST and BDIST wheel. And uh, wheel is my preferred uh, installation, I try to make sure. Versioning. Now, some people will say stick to PEP440. I say no, I'll stick to Semver. There's also Calver, uh, which uses like uh, YouTube DL, if somebody knows, or other packages like TZ Data. Uh, they are time sensitive or time related. So they use a, let's say, 219.06 or 0.6 and so on. 
you can verify, validate, and uh, actually uh, even uh, use it for building and uh, pinning the version using Versioneer. And it's really good idea to uh, use that. CI. Um, you should always test on master. It's nothing Python specific. It's just test on master and then test and build on uh, and deploy on a tag, on a specific tag. It's easier to uh, automate uh, things that way. Don't try to uh, be smart and uh, uh, just up the version in the CI. Don't do it. Uh, you should always pin the version uh, inside the Python code, uh, whether if it, it's uh, through versioneer or just said on the init file, then import it in setup and use it. Uh, CI is a good place also to filter files that you don't want people to get in the wheel or in the source distribution, um, whether it's, uh, if it's tests or other files that are just for development. About public and private distributions. Uh, usually you'll use pypy.org uh, or just install tarballs from somewhere from a friend or from uh, directly from GitHub, GitLab, whatever. And uh, you can uh, use the Git, the VCS notation in pypy and uh, in pip. And finally, you can use private indexes. It's a good idea when you develop inside a company to use a private index, because when you uh, want to test something and you don't want to publish it yet, but you want to run tests or just use it internally, and you can uh, keep some secrets or just uh, um, intellectual property inside the company, it's a good idea to use private indexes. It uh, can really help. I use the DevPy, which is a really great tool, and uh, it allows also caching and uh, hierarchical, uh, hierarchical uh, indexes. So, uh, dependency managers. Um, did anyone use pip env? Cool, good luck. Uh, pip tools, anyone? Ah, wow. Cool. It was fun, but <laughs> it was a headache. Uh, Pip, well, we all at some point used it. Uh, poetry is actually uh, a nice implementation of uh, Pep 518 and 517. It uses the PyProject Toml and it uses, it uses a, a lock file, which is pretty nice and uh, easy to use. It's fast. Whatever you choose, there's no, uh, as I said, I don't think that there is one way. There should be a preferred way, something you stick to it, you, your team, your company, whatever. Just use something that works, make sure it works and it doesn't waste your time. If it takes more than 10% of your day, like 45 minutes, then you're doing something wrong. Yeah. So about the requirements, I have a, a position on handling Secondary, you can do it. I actually, uh, in some data science projects at the company, I implemented a, uh, in the setup.py a CMD class to take the setup.py uh, extras and gen uh, generate the requirements, including extras uh, requirements. I don't think it's a good idea because it's hard to pin the versions. Uh, if you use pip tools, then you get the, uh, the locking mechanism on requirements txt. But uh, I noticed it doesn't handle uh, good some uh, package names for some reason, uh, especially uh, VCS uh, projects and others. Okay, now uh, to some more uh, live coding. Uh, init and main pi. Um, how many know the difference or the usages? Nobody? Main pi? Seriously? Dunder main pi? Okay. 
Um, so let's see what we have here. We have a um, project. We have a, a free directory. We have inside a package PyCon. Inside I have IL, ignore the Thunder PyCache. Then we have an init, we have init and main, Thunder main. When you distribute a package, you can always allow people to run things like this. Okay? Yeah, PyCon, right. We still don't have a command line for that. But if I'm gonna try to run uh, the module PyCon, it's not actually a module, it's a package. And if I'm going to run that IL, it's going to say go through init. It's going to load init and then it under main dot uh, pi. It's really useful uh, when you want to allow people to run um, uh, to run certain uh, jobs, uh, certain uh, aspects of your code, and uh, like I can run. Icon thunder in it, and it's gonna just not less. I want to, yeah, Python. I still can run it, and it's gonna say uh, it's gonna go through in it and just uh, load the file. And then, if I'm gonna look at it, I made this if name equals main, and it's gonna print this out. So, this is good if you want something short, but if you want to uh, do something like um, something like this, to allow people to run things directly from your package uh, without knowing where it's installed or anything, it, ju it should just load the module and run it. It's really useful to uh, know how it looks. So it's actually Nothing different, it's just, it just runs. So if you want to run something else, let's try to change it. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm going to run something like this, OK, yeah, right, cool. Um, no, that's for consoles. Sorry, I forgot how it works. Anyway, so this is useful for uh, console scripts entry points. So if I'll, I'm going to Right, forgot to set that up. Anyway, um, so if I'm going to put an entry point, entry point is actually uh, translated to a shell, um, a Python executable. Okay. Right. Okay, let's do something like that. Okay. Okay, now let's create this app. Okay, so. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, right. And then uh, let's. Hmm? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, this is a, a file. I'm going to cut. Right. So, uh, this is uh, the file pycon il 19 demo slash main.py, and it has a function app. And in the setup pi, I'm going to. Inside uh, the setup uh, function, um, I added uh, the entry point. Console script and uh, PyCon IL demo, it's going to call PyCon IL demo dot, uh, dot main uh, colon app. Okay, so if I'm going to set it up, Entry points. Sorry, my mistake. Never live code, always prepare. Okay. Right. Sorry. Something, yeah. Hmm? Okay. Nope. Yeah. Hmm? Right. No, it's this. Okay. Seriously. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Only it didn't. Uh, right. You know why. Nope. Yeah, it's this is uh, messing up. Yeah, it's fun. I know. I shouldn't have taken the challenge. Um, anyway, let's go forward. It's uh, more in the Read the Fabulous manual. Uh, you should, really you should. Um, CMD class, as I mentioned before, CMD class is really useful uh, utility when you want to give uh, the setup uh, more, uh, more juice. Sometimes you're using um, for uh, CI or CD um, some, uh, you want to add some uh, options, which depends on the code, but you don't want to write, to write uh, sp uh, more special things, or you just want to uh, build a package differently. So you can add a CMD class uh, much like uh, the entry points, and uh, give it a class or a function and uh, just let it run. So uh, if you ever wondered, uh, Python uh, setup.py install, install is actually a command class function inside setup tools. It uh, initiates a PyPy RC command and it runs it. Uh, package name that done their version. This is something I uh, really try to uh, tell people to use because uh, I saw some people using Versioneer. It's useful, it's really useful, but it has some drawbacks like uh, um, 
sometimes if you have a web app and you want to get the info about the package and you want to know what version it's running, it has some latency. And uh, in some uh, applications, this is really important. So whenever you uh, make a deployment, uh, just pin the version inside uh, the package name. Um, now about namespacing. Um, has anyone used namespacing of a uh, package or a group of packages? Anyone? No? Some? Okay, nice. So, uh, does any know, anyone know uh, ZC BuildBot? Okay. Uh, ZC dot build, BuildBot is actually a package, but there is no ZC uh, package in uh, PyPy, if you'll uh, check it out. Um, it uses just the namespace and it, left, it leaves it blank so it can expand uh, on it. And sometimes you would want to install different packages, uh, let's say PyCon, and then you'll want IL, EU, uh, UK. So you'll build a, pa build a package, uh, PyCon, and in the init, everything, all you do is just, uh, you set package resource, um, let me show you just a second. Okay, let's give it some time. Yeah, no internet. Sorry, it's buildbot, but it's uh, saved under ZC buildbot. Anyway, it's uh, you set it up, and then you can install uh, several packages. All of them are um, under the same namespace. You access them under the same namespace. It's useful if you want to manage plugins, plugins, and uh, uh, add-ons on the same, allow other people to uh, um, create upon your uh, uh, project. It's really useful. Yeah. Hmm? Anyway. There's more in the manuals. So, uh, questions, sorry. Yeah. I talked about Virginia. What does it mean? You talked about Virginia. Virginia. What is it? Virginia is a simple uh, project that creates a file. Uh, underscore version.py inside your uh, package, and it tries to understand what version you are at. If it's a clean version, a dirty version, uh, it tries to take from Git or from other v uh, VCSs, and it tries to give you the best inf uh, uh, version string to identify your current state. It's really useful, and it has many uh, it, it, is, it is useful. It's, it mostly uses git describe and uh, other uh, uh, subcommands uh, to understand. But again, it accesses, accesses the file system. It uses other um, methods, which sometimes take long. And if you don't uh, distribute your package correctly or forget to build or some, I tested it yesterday and in the wheel, it didn't uh, uh, create a, a slim version to, uh, to make it uh, more fast. Uh, on, while on SDIST, it, it did. So it's something I, I since it, it's, not expe it's not consistent uh, behavior, I wouldn't use it until it's fixed. But it is a good utility. Okay, thank you.